So after my recent video on signs of lupus, I got a number of requests, please talk about scleroderma. So that's what this video is about. What exactly is scleroderma? It's an autoimmune condition in which basically you overproduce collagen. You guys are aware of collagen in our skin. In fact, most of us are seeking ways to increase collagen production because normally it declines with age and that's what leads to wrinkles and the visible signs of skin aging or part of part of what leads to that. But with scleroderma, you overproduce collagen to a point where it leads to areas of hard, thickened skin. And not only the skin, but it can affect internal organs, your joints. And depending on the type of scleroderma you have, it can be more life-threatening, whereas other types remain more localized to affect certain areas. So what are some signs of scleroderma? Well, it's gonna depend on the type. There's systemic scleroderma and there's localized scleroderma. So localized scleroderma, as it implies, remains localized to confined areas. And within localized scleroderma, there are also different types of localized scleroderma. One that I know a lot of you guys have because you've asked me about is called morphia. With morphia, you have one or more patches of thickened skin and initially it can kind of have a violet appearance, especially at the edge of it. It's really subtle and it can itch and be uncomfortable. Then you have generalized morphia where you have multiple patches. With generalized morphia, you have multiple patches on different areas of the body. These patches can come together into larger areas and it can extend to the deeper um, parts of the skin. Then there is a linear variant. Linear variants present, well, in a line, and they can often be a line of kind of thickened skin where you have loss of some of the tissues can happen on the legs, it can happen on the head and neck, um, on the face. There's a particular variant named Incu de Salle, where it involves the forehead and the face and the scalp, and the tissues can be lost and you can get some disfigurement as a result. So that's localized, but then you have systemic. With systemic scleroderma, that implies that um, it's affecting the internal organs. Within systemic scleroderma, you also have two different variants. You have limited systemic scleroderma, meaning it's primarily localized and appears as thickening of the skin, usually below the elbows and the knees, but also can involve the head and neck. But then you can have hardening of internal organ systems such as the digestive tract and the kidneys. With limited scleroderma, patients often have involvement of their fingertips. They develop these little sores and notably they can develop little hard calcium deposits. Then you have the diffuse systemic variant where you have more generalized involvement of thickening of the skin and involvement of internal organs. Usually over weeks to months, you get hard thickened skin over multiple areas. It can become so involved that you develop immobility in the joints such as the hands, the jaw, and this variant generally involves one or more internal organs, such as the lungs, the kidneys. These areas of hard, thickened skin, they feel, well, thick, kind of appear waxy, and they almost feel as if they're anchored to the tissues underneath. Within the affected areas of skin thickening, you often have loss of hair, and because of the increased deposition of collagen in those affected areas of the skin, it starts to compromise the efficacy of the eccrine sweat glands. So sweat is necessary to cool the body. So you can have areas of what's called anhydrosis, no sweat production. These areas can also become very dry and patients oftentimes have a lot of itch associated with this. There can be overlying skin color changes. It's often dark, hyperpigmented. And as I said, when it is in its active advancing stage, you may see this sort of purplish violet border. A lot of patients with systemic sclerosis develop a salt and pepper appearance to the skin on their upper back, the chest, and also in the scalp along the hairline. If you develop this, this is a really important warning sign of systemic sclerosis and important to be evaluated by your healthcare provider. Like I said, it can involve the joints to such an extent that they become stiff, immobile, have difficulty using your hands, and also um, unable to open the mouth very wide. A lot of patients who have variants of scleroderma develop almost kind of a mask-like appearance to their face, 
again, they have a lot of collagen deposition in the skin, so it's very smooth. Variants of scleroderma can affect uh, children and adolescents, and depending on the variant, if it extends down deep to the muscles, the tissues, well, it can impact uh, bone growth. So for example, very rarely they may have um, a problem with the development of, say, a leg, or it can lead to muscle atrophy, and again, tissue loss. When it affects the face, as in in coup de sable, that can be quite disfiguring. Patients with limited systemic sclerosis often have involvement of these little sores and ulcers on their fingertips. They have these like pinpoint pitted scars on the fingertips. These patients also often have these very prominent dilated telangiectasias, little mats of prominent blood vessels that you can see on the palms, the cheeks, the upper chest. So that is a hallmark feature. All in all, it's part of what's called crest. Um, you have the calcinosis, um, and then you have some other findings, including telangiectasias. Now, speaking of other findings, along with crest, you have something called Raynaud's. So if you're not familiar with Raynaud's, it is basically a cold sensitivity where your extremities, like your fingers, your toes, your ears as well, and your nose, can be very sensitive to cold temperatures. You experience like your fingers turning from white to blue and then red. And to be clear, a lot of people have this Raynaud's phenomenon, but they don't have, um, they don't have scleroderma. Um, they don't have this crest syndrome. It's, it's uh, some people just have Raynaud's, but it can go along with crest, calcinosis, Raynaud's, and I'll explain the other things in a moment. Um, but again, it involves the fingers and they become very narrowed. The fingertips become narrowed due to loss of tissue there. And so that's called sclerodactyly. And then um, they also have the telangiectasias. It can affect the uh, motility of the esophagus. They can have heartburn difficulty swallowing. This condition, when it impacts internal organs, it often targets the digestive tract. As I said, patients who have the constellation of symptoms that fall under our crest will have esophageal dysmotility, um, and they can have digestive upset, a lot of patients will have diarrhea, constipation, abdominal bloating. And because of the digestive problems, oftentimes these patients experience weight loss that is unintentional. Aside from the digestive tract, a lot of patients with this condition also have other um, problems with their health, high blood pressure, they can have an irregular heartbeat, and they can have shortness of breath. So those are some of the signs of scleroderma. Again, there are a lot of different variants and it can involve the skin and internal organs in different ways. And who gets scleroderma? Well, most types are primarily in women, except the linear variant happens in men and women equally. It can happen at any age. Again, children and adolescents can develop it. There is an association with scleroderma and exposures to silica dust, but that association requires further research to delineate. So just because you have this, it doesn't mean necessarily that you had silica dust exposure. So as far as the seriousness of the condition, it really depends on the type that you have, but medications that target the immune system to calm down whatever it is that is driving the excessive collagen production in the skin, probably some sort of autoantibody that stimulates the cells that make collagen to do so inappropriately. Now, a question I often get from you guys is like, I have scleroderma, can I take collagen supplements? And the answer to that is we don't really know. You know, the research on uh, collagen supplements in and of itself, it still, still requires a lot more studying in order to answer key questions like dosing, what groups it is effective for. So we really can't answer that question. But the systemic variants definitely impact internal organs like the kidneys, the lungs, the heart. So there are medications that are necessary to control the disease process, can be quite serious, quite debilitating, and it can severely restrict someone's mobility. It can impact their ability to move their face, their hands. So it's definitely, you know, runs a spectrum in terms of symptoms and manifestations, 
but I hope this video was helpful in pointing out some of the signs of scleroderma. On the end slide, I'm gonna link my recent video all about signs of lupus, so check that one out next. And I have a playlist all about skin signs of health conditions not to miss, where I have lots of videos similar to this on conditions like heart disease, thyroid disease, so definitely check that out if you are at all curious as to how our skin is a window into what could be going on internally and all of the different findings associated with different health problems. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.